in three, two, one. Buttermilk. Welcome to Podcast Across Worlds. My name is Alehua Superfina, your host. And this is our guest host, Mikhail Casanova. We are people who can watch a lot of anime and read manga. And we have figured out that we can talk about for hours. So in Podcast Across Worlds, we talk about anime and manga and everything else we're interested in. So first, I would like to introduce Mikhail Casanova and have him talk about himself so you guys know who he is because he is new to this show. So basically, this is your way of like, you know what? I don't want to introduce you. Introduce your own self. Okay, I got it. I got it. I, all right, let me get my mic ready. Hi. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Mikhail Casanova. I'm a Hawaii content creator, podcaster, and streamer. Um, I am not as into anime as I used to be when I was younger, and I'm definitely not as into manga as much as when I was younger. But when you live with this one right here, you kind of get into it. It's kind of inevitable for you to see some, you know, anime drawn characters and whatnot every single day. So yeah, that's why we're here. I don't mind. I like this person over here. She's cool. <laughs> and this is why I had you talk about yourself. See, because you did so well. <laughs> In today's episode of Podcast Across Worlds, we are going to talk about Ron My Half. I read Ron My Half when I was in junior high, and I didn't touch it since. He and I, we started watching it on Hulu. And it was actually Mikhail Casanova who got into it. So I have to ask, what made you want to watch it? Okay, so we're going to step into DeLorean a bit and go back in time. So when I was a kid, right, I was like a, a wee lad, right? Um, I remember reading Game Pro Magazine. Or no, 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 not Game Pro. Uh, EGM, Electronic Gaming Magazine. So I read that magazine. I saw these characters that looked super cool. And I was like, Ranma, or at the time I was saying Ranma, because, you know, we didn't understand the phonetics back then. But uh, Ranma half. So I'm not really sure if it's Ranma half or Ran Ranma half or Ranma one half. But back then I saw it and it looked really cool. You had the two Ranmas and I was like, I didn't know if they were brothers or sisters. Look brother and sister or like you know lovers or something like that because it just didn't have context it just looked cool it was a fighting game called ranma uh ranma half hard battle for super nintendo and so i was always fascinated but then never learned anything more about the series uh so fast forward 20 some plus years uh here i am in my 30s aging myself uh <laughs> i um on a whim I was on a site and I forget the name of the site, but it popped up and it showed Ron my half. And so I was like, Oh man, I remember that. And I, and I was like, Oh yeah, I remember it's that super Nintendo game. I was like, I was always curious. So I downloaded the ROM illegally, mind you, and uh, put it in my emulator and played it. And I was like, Oh, this is shit. And then I was like, yeah, oh, what's so popular about this? Because people were like, people were saying how like amazing, that game was like even now and i'm like yo this is shitty so i'm like what's the source material so i was on hulu and i saw it and i was like oh yeah i said that that anime from the lady who made in yasha i was like oh, lady, how is it you're like uh i don't know i just know that akane is annoying as hell i was like ah oh, she can't be that bad she's like, i hate her that's <laughs> quote for quote that's what she said so then i went and i watched um I started watching the episodes and um, what are we like 60, 70 some episodes in and I like it. Uh, it was my initiative to watch it, not hers. And she, like she said, she hasn't really caught up with it since what junior high. I've never even read the manga, but I started watching the anime and I really like it. I just hate Akane. So let's talk about what Rama Half is about. So Rama Half is about it started out, the story starts out with Akane Tendo, and she has two she sisters. Sucks. <laughs> she has two sisters, and her dad runs a dojo. Uh, the Tendo Anything Goes uh, fighting style. 
So it starts off with that. And then the father says, okay, my friend is coming over with his son. One of you is going to marry the son. And so the friend comes over and it's not a son. It's a daughter. So Ranma turns out to be a girl. And they're like, she's hot too. <laughs> and, and just for those who, who want to know, the, depending on how the kanji is written, Ranma can mean woman with mounds as big as mountains titties in other words okay go ahead continue yes she is gifted <laughs> bountiful and so the story, the story goes on <laughs> then akane and rama they start getting friendly and then akane tells rama okay go take a bath and then Akane's like, oh, since Rama's in the bath, I'll take a bath too. We're both girls. Totally fine. Right? She goes into the bathroom and she doesn't find a girl. She finds a guy. And so the story unfolds and it turns out that Rama is cursed. Him and his dad were in China. They fell into these cursed springs. Rama turns Yen into Kyo. a girl. <laughs> in Sinkyo Springs. So when Rama gets hit with cold water, he turns into a girl. He turns back into a guy when he hits with hot water. From there, Akane's attitude towards Rama changes. Like, totally changes. All because she found out that Rama's actually a guy. This was a bad impression for me. A very bad first impression. First episode. First episode. And Rama's not alone in the curse. His dad is cursed too. He turns into a panda. So I started reading this when I was in junior high. It was one of the first manga I've read along with Inuyasha. So I was reading those around the same time. And because I didn't start with those, I actually had friends who had the manga already. They had the volumes. So I would borrow the volumes from them. And then it got to the point where, you know, Buying manga is expensive. They're like $10 each. Mm -hmm. And there's that one point where the volumes weren't coming out as fast. And at one point, I just stopped reading it. And then every now and then, I would see at the library. So sometimes the library had it. And it's it was not always there because there's other people who are reading it too. And so I just stopped reading it. And... Uh, I didn't know there was like an anime on it, but I never watched it because I was like, eh, I kind of know the story and I don't like Akane. And from what I remembered, nothing was resolved. It took a really long time and I was getting tired of waiting for Akane to be more likable. <laughs> what she's trying to say is Akane is a... I can't say it. This is your show. You can say it. She's a bitch. <laughs> anyway, continue. Um, so I have Mikhail over here watching the anime on Hulu. And he's asked me, how come you've, you've never seen the anime? And I don't usually watch older style animes. Because my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me defend not. myself. Let me be fair. So my thing is, I figured, you know, the older animes have a plot, a setting that I've seen before and is repeated. And if I'm going to see something like that, a, a plot, a setting, I might as well see it in a higher quality, newer design. That's, that's my thing. But... Ron half is very unique. It's really funny. Like it has a lot of humor you don't see today. You don't. And it it's sort of like you can't see it today. It would not go well today. <laughs> <laughs> and why is that? Why is that? Um, I mean, this this day and age right now of censorship and hate speech and uh political correctness. Um, yeah, I think the LGBTQ community would have a field day if, if this was brought back in modern day, um, Rumiko Takahashi would get canceled. 
<laughs> she would be canceled so quickly. I mean, some of the jokes in there, uh, to me, I find them funny. And it's, it's interesting because you have a lot of people. Okay, so we'll, we'll dive into this real quick. So a lot of people that I've seen, because I've been looking up to see what other people's impressions are of it. So in modern day, within the last four years, um, people who are watching it are trying to, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? They're trying to put themselves in the shoes of saying like this helped them with their gender fluidity or with being trans or whatever, or all this other stuff. But it's funny because when you ask Rumiko Takahashi, she's like, I don't think about any of this stuff. Like literally she, she writes stuff and it's like the most random stuff. And she just puts it in there with any, there's no follow up on it. There's nothing, I guess you could say is it's surface level. So it has nothing to do with, um, you know, uh, sexual orientation or political or anything like that. It's literally just stuff that is, I guess you could say it's very Japanese centric, like what their culture is, how they view things outside of their culture is very Japanese centric. And there are some people that have issue with it saying like, it's, it's, uh, transphobic, it's homophobic, it's like this, this, and this. And I'm like, well, again, you have, if you live in America, or you live in the West, you have Western mentalities that are not there. So you have to keep that in perspective. Um, they don't view things the same thing we do, the same way we do. And I think a lot of people, if this were to come back, a lot of people would take issue with it, which I think is a reason why she probably hasn't brought it back. You'll see Inuyasha more quickly than you'd see Rama half. Everything you just talked about, like gender fluidity and relating it to transgender and such. I remember when I was reading Rama, I was in, I was in junior high. I didn't think any of that stuff. I did, I just thought it was really funny that this guy who turned to a girl and he gets into all these predicaments and even as just a regular guy, he's in these predicaments and he has this dad who sells him off to be married to other families and putting him in these predicaments and you have this fiance, Akane becomes his fiance reluctantly, who is never sympathetic. One one, One of, of many. many. <laughs> and she's always blaming him. She, like, a girl comes along and she says, I am your fiance. Your father made this deal. And she doesn't blame the father. She blames Ranma. And I'm like, girl, why is he hitting this man? <laughs> Hit the father. <laughs> Every time. Every time he gets, he gets blamed for stuff he didn't even do. Like and, that, and I think so. So some people have said like it's she's more tolerable and less of a jerk in the manga than the anime. But you've read the manga and you're like, no, she's the same. Yeah, she's the same, and the anime did it very well. Did it very well. I usually don't like these characters because they just so they sound so annoying really really annoying like usually especially in english dubs they make the character extra annoying like they exaggerate it but the voice actress for iconic did it very well like it wasn't that grating to the ears it's just the personality just the personality <laughs> can you imagine what it would be like if they tried to uh dub that now because I, 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 and this is a bit of a pet peeve I have with modern dub or voice actors compared to the ones we grew up with. I feel like the ones we grew up with, because the voice acting industry was not as widespread as it is now, you had a lot of people who were classically trained in theater transferring that over to this, where now you have a lot of people that just take a couple, you know, voice acting for dummy classes, and then all of a sudden, you know, they're cool with an industry and then they got a job. And 
a lot of people, a lot of modern voice actors, and I'm not trying to bash anybody because, you know, we're friends with quite a number of, quite a large number of voice actors. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the problems I have with a lot of modern voice actors is they sound like they phone it in. It sounds like they're not really making, you know, a lot of effort. And I'm, I'm not trying to say that they're not, but it comes off that way, like, everything seems like overly dramatic and not based in some semblance of reality. And a lot of the characters that you hear one voice actor doing one character, they all sound the same. Case in point, uh, Christina V. She sounds the same in everything she does. And there's no disrespect to her. That's my boy's girl. But she sounds the same in everything she does. Same thing can be said of Richard Cox, who does the voice of Inuyasha, who we found out also does the voice of Ranma and uh, sounds the same. There's very few who are able to sound different, like Jai Young Bosch can sound different. And a lot like there's some roles I've heard a man where I'm like, I can't tell this Johnny. Same thing with um, the guy who did uh, Spike Spiegel, uh, Steve Bloom. That dude did so many iconic voices back in the 90s and early 2000s and still does stuff now. And he naturally talks with that gravelly voice, but he can switch it up. And like, he, he, you know, he's a classically trained actor. So no two performances sound the same. But these guys now, they all sound the same. So I think if they did it with voice actors now, it would come off okay case in point uh here's an example we heard the differences the other day between all the sailor moon voice actors from the original dub to now original dub was funny had personality modern dub is eh. the i believe the critique was she didn't sound her age <laughs> Yeah, because she's not very nosly. Like, I'm trying to be like a 14-year-old girl with pigtails. Well, that's where the exaggeration comes from that I don't like because they're trying to sound like it, but they really missed the mark. And it's like, you didn't have to go that far. I don't know why they didn't direct you to tone it down. Like, <laughs> why weren't it, why wasn't it corrected? Why did they think it was fine and just let you do more episodes with that voice? I, I think. Like, like a good example of a modern voice actor that's got tremendous range and capability. And you might be surprised at me saying this, but it's Sean Chiplock. He is a phenomenal voice actor. Like, was it uh, the God of High School? I had no idea that was him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. Because and and uh, was it? He's in Mortal Kombat 11. He plays Noob Cybot. No idea that was him. Because I'm just used to hearing him as Reen or as uh, what's the other character? Uh, Rivali. Because those two sound the same. But he's very good with expressive range, and I do feel like that's kind of a lost art. So if Ron Mo were to come back. I'm going to say this. I wouldn't want no new voice actors touching that. Bring back Sarah Strange, who did the original dub, who was, well, what, for the first half of the show, the first mm-hmm. two, three seasons, she was Ranma. Bring her back. I mean, she's hot. She was hot in uh, Life As We Know. I used to watch that when I was a kid. Yeah, she was a hot mom. I was like, yo, that's a MILF right there. Yo, let me go to your house. Let her come back and do, let her come back and do uh, um, Rama and the entire cast because there's something to be said about the older the, the, everyone who's cast in that show, which is crazy when you realize that they were all teenagers at the time, mm-hmm. like 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, and that was their first gig. That's the part that blows me away. Unless somebody's going to correct me, if so correct me in the comments below. But um, th- it blew me away. But anyway, this is your show. I'm, I'm going to shut up. You, you do your thing. <laughs> the reason why we're doing this show with you is because we know you got a lot to say about Ranma. You got a lot. I do. I do. 
I, do. I mean, you're the one who watched almost every episode up to what season four. Yeah, I am seventy episodes in right now, and there's like a hundred and forty, so I'm halfway through with this entire show. I I literally watch six episodes every single night. <laughs> And I watch episodes with you every now and then. Whenever I'm with you, you ask what do you want to watch. I'm like, we can watch Ranma. Let's watch Ranma. Mm-hmm. And, and we just pick up where you left off. <laughs> because I did read the manga. I know what's going on. What did throw me off was there were some episodes that we were watching. And I was like, I don't remember this. I don't remember this happening at all. And you would even ask me, like, like this happened and i'm like i don't know i i don't remember and i'm thinking no i should remember some of these things and then we found out that the anime wasn't really following the manga chapter by chapter i was like blown by that i was like what i thought i was just having a shitty memory you know what's crazy so out of 140 or 150 episodes in the of the anime about 20 episodes all the manga see that's like what one fifth one fifth of the anime was from the manga so I remembered the characters and whenever I talk about Ranma with people and they ask who's your favorite character I'm like at first I said oh I like Ryoga and Shampoo because that's who I remembered Mm -hmm. I like I like Ryoga because he has this. John. <laughs> so he views Rama as a rival. So this is a rival. This is a rival. The rival who always is competitive with Rama. Even though Rama kicks his butt every time. But Ryoga is like Vegeta. He comes back. <laughs> he comes back to fight. And they knew each other in junior high. And it got to a point where Ryoga followed rama which was a really bad idea because ryoga has a a very bad direction very bad a good example is ryoga challenged rama to good example is my mom (laughs) my mom (laughs) had no damn sense of direction (laughs) he he instructs rama to meet him at the empty lot behind ryoga's house Three days le- later, three days later, Ryoga shows up. He got lost getting there. It's his own backyard. <laughs> yeah. So from there, Ranma's dad took him to China so they can train. China is where Rama got cursed. Because Ryoga followed Rama, Ryoga also fell into the cursed springs and he fell into the cursed spring of a pig. So whenever Ryoga ter- gets hit by cold water, he turns into a pig. Pichan! <laughs> now, Ryoga also has a crush on Akane. Because I don't like how Akane interacts with Rama. Like, she's she's so mean to him. I want her to get together with Ryoga. I'm like, Ryoga's nice to you. You're nice to him. You guys should totally get together. <laughs> you should totally get together. They'll make things work so well. Okay, but the problem is that Ryoga is in that ever so exclusive and widely available friend box. <laughs> <laughs> he is friend zoned to high hell and doesn't. And the thing is. I have a lot of grievances with Akane, and we will get into that as we go. She, okay, this bitch has no idea that Pichon is Ryoga. She has no idea that Ryoga even has a, even when they were set up on a date by Ukio, we'll, we'll get into her shortly. She has no idea that he likes her. Anyway, continue. So, that's another thing about Akane. She doesn't notice things. So, Ryoga has like this bandana. Pichan still wears that 
bandana. <laughs> she doesn't connect it. She, she does not connect it. But anyways, I think Rielga is so sincere. And he's know, the only good character in that entire show. He's the only sincere. No, 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 no. Him and the older sister and Dr. To- Tofu. They're the only sincere characters in the entire show. <laughs> so when I first saw Ryoga, I was like, that's my man. That's my boy. Yeah. And then Mikhail sees how directional challenged he is. And he sees that he turns into a pig. He's like, why do you like him? He's like, because he's so nice. <laughs> and... I think he, he used- you know you know why you like him because he reminds you of all them dudes you put in a friend box, don't he? No, no, he just doesn't. Stop, he? Stop that! <laughs> Stop that! You know, Ryoga didn't confess just to Kai. Okay. <laughs> Stop that! Stop bringing that up. <laughs> you bad man. <laughs> the Ryoga. He could just confess to Akane, but he's so shy. And I think he views Rama as a friend, and that's why he always wants to fight him. And he's really strong. Like, for someone who just wanted to beat Rama just to fight him, and he's pretty determined to fight Rama. Like, he chases after him and gets lost along the way, and he got stronger along the way. I mean, it's not like he trained to fight like Rama does. Rama Saltome. Whose father runs the Anything Goes Saltome Dojo? No, no Jojo. No, 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 it's the Saltome School of Anything Goes Martial Arts. See, there you go. Anything Goes. So Rama knows all types of styles. And sometimes Ryoga is like on the same par, on the same level. So Ryoga and then Shampoo. Shampoo. I love how straightforward she is. Totally opposite of Akane. Akane's like a tsundere. She's like rawr, mean at one moment and then sweet the next. And then there's Shampoo, who's from China. She's a there's Amazon. A, there's, a, there's a term for that. The bitch is bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, continue. So I like Shampoo because she's so straightforward. There's like a misunderstanding between her and Ranma, but then eventually she's like, I love Ranma. I want to marry Ranma. Like she she knows what she wants. She's going for it. And she's nice to Ranma. But then she kind of freaks Ranma out. <laughs> so he's like, nah, you're crazy. <laughs> I don't want to be with you. But like, but she's so sweet to him. But she she is a little conniving. <laughs> she does do some shady stuff to him. <laughs> I would say that the only reason she, if he, okay, so again, if you were to go with that episode we learned about the grandmother, I think sh- shampoo is very much like her grandmother. So I think if Rama cut the cut the BS and got with her, I think he, she would mellow out. At least, okay, so who's worse? Who's more conniving, her or Kodachi? Kodachi. <laughs> you want to explain, explain who Kodachi is? Kodachi is all my exes rolled into one. Crazy, manipulative, bipolar, schizophrenic, homicidal. Like, it's, damn, she just, just that, that Diane in the, in, the bu- <laughs> in the bucket of chicken right there. That girl is crazy. Like, you know, and, and how Kodachi and her brother, oh my God, we can go into the topic of her brother, uh, Tadawaki Kuno, that dude is crazy. So they, so the brother and sister, which is, this is an interesting dynamic. So Kodachi is in love with Rama and she's willing to do anything to get Rama, anything, anything to get Rama. Um, Tadawaki Kuno, I give him leeway. He, he's not willing to do anything to get Akane. He's not willing to do anything to get Pigtail Girl or Female Ranma. So his sister's a little bit more crazy. 
but they're both crazy because Tadawaki likes Akane and Akane hates him. And then he also is in love with female Ranma. He, in, well, Ranma hates him. And then Kodachi is in love with Ranma and Ranma, you know, and it's interesting because Kodachi hates Akane and Tadawaki hates Ranma. So it's an interesting dynamic. And then further along in the season, you, the, the show, then you meet the granddad who, no, the dad who, <laughs> the dad is, um, Okay, is he Hawaiian or is he Japanese? Or he Japanese and went to Hawaii and then all of a sudden picked up a Jamaican accent. So he probably took the Ryoga route of getting lost. So he he went to Jamaica. Yeah, man. Yeah, he went to Jamaica, man. He went and picked up the oxen. You know, he's talking like this, man. Yeah, he went and got, he went to one sip, sip cup, man. He went and got the cup. Yeah, man. So he went and he, he talks like this, man. And then he went to Hawaii and he went jam. Yeah, he went jam with the kickies, bro. Yeah, he went jam with the kickies. And then he went when, from Hawaii. He came back to Japan and he he's principal of the school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> yeah, man. Aloha. That's a good. That's a a good one right so yeah we're talking about kodachi okay so kodachi is um she's very conniving manipulative um we've seen the extremes that she's willing to go to like when her and tadawaki fought uh they pulled out what sniper rifles rocket launchers grenades machine guns like they were going crazy so she's really always competing with akane to try and get ranma and she's done stuff like, uh, you know, uh, m- put stuff in her cookies to like manipulate Ranma, which is like under a love spell. Which, if I could, if I recall correctly, Shampoo did the same thing to Ranma. Yeah, she did. He, the difference, I think, the difference between the two is the one that Kodachi made will make you literally fall in love. Whereas the one the shampoo me just makes you submit to her will. So I think that's the difference between the two. Because shampoo's one was he would hug her. Or he hugged anyone that did, uh, was it a whistle or a snap or something like that? Sneeze. It was a sneeze. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So um, between, if I had to choose between shampoo and Kodachi, I'm sorry, I'm going with shampoo. She's from China. She's an Amazon. She probably got them. Them legs and thighs where she she could probably pop out a couple kids, you know. Just saying, you know, she she, she know how it look like she can did you see the thing that she took on when she won before Rama beat her? I'm sure she can handle her own. She probably a freak too. You know, just saying. But anyway, um I go with her. So I mean she's conniving, yes, but she's not as bad as anywhere near the vicinity of Kodachi. Um should I should I go on about Ukio? Or we wait, we'll bring her up later. Up to you. Your show. Well, I want to ask who are your favorite characters? Oh, okay. My favorite character is not a Kane, that's off the top. Uh so my favorite you know what's funny is my favorite character in the show is Nabiki. Nabiki is my favorite character. She's just that voice actress nailed her perfectly. And she's had like what two different voice actresses? Yeah, nailed. She her. did. She would she nailed that performance. Like she is smarmy, snarky. She'll do anything for money in the sense of not okay. When I say she'll do anything for money, I don't mean that she's gonna do anything to jeopardize. She never jeopardizes herself. She will, as Cameron used to say, she will finesse. She will finesse whatever she has or whatever she can get out of you. Like she did with Tofu, where uh, basically there's an episode where Tofu's mom came back to the um, he came back to check in on him because she wanted to have uh, him get married and have kids and stuff. And so Nabiki struck a deal with Dr. Tofu, who is in love with her older sister. And then when he sees her, he apparently gets stupid, can't do anything right. You know, classic stuff that real simps in real life do. But um, 
then Nabiki struck a deal. <laughs> Trust me, you've had sense before. You know how that is. Anyway, uh, Nabiki struck a deal with him. Well, basically, he would help her. He got to pay her. He had to give her food and he had to buy her stuff. And then she would do, uh, she would pretend to be the engaged. Now, Nabiki does this with everybody. She charges everybody. Like when she did the whole thing, she's taking pictures of female Rama and Akane, which is funny because the same pictures she took of both of them are, in, and she basically took pictures of them to blackmail them to get money from Kuno because she knew Kuno wanted the pictures. And so Kuno paid her. He acted like he was going to be all chivalrous and manly. And he's like, here. <laughs> <laughs> He gave her money. And it's funny because the picture, he blew up the pictures. And all throughout the series, whenever you see Kudo at his house, those two pictures. Are <laughs> he wakes up, he's like, and then, like, when you see Kudo meditate, he's like, I love Akane. I love Pigtail Girl. I love Akane. I love Pigtail Girl. <laughs> So yes, Nabiki is my favorite character. I love just how conniving. Well, she's the most conniving character in the series. I love her. She's awesome. She's someone I I would never go drinking with her. I would never trust taking anything from her, but she's awesome. <laughs> um, the second favorite character that I have in the show is Ryoga. And I like Ryoga for the fact that he is literally the most chivalrous and honorous honorable character in the show he really is you would think the martial arts would be but none of the martial arts have any type of honor <laughs> like none of them are honorable except for him like he won't fight with women uh he doesn't fight dirty and the thing is like he's he's always training to beat ranma but he never gets to he never gets his win, which is the thing I really dislike about the show is he never, I, I hate how Ranma has the plot armor and he's just like unbeatable and it's annoying because Ryoga deserves some wins in there. And honestly, you know, the way he has his crush on Akane is it's cute. It's really cute. You know, it's, it's believable how they performed it. Like he really likes Akane. Like he genuinely, and I think if they got together, I think they would be happy personally, you know, and I think they would actually run the dojo and I think she could tolerate him getting lost. Um, tolerate him. <laughs> I mean, I think she would. I mean, we see her loving side when she is with Peach on and I think him and her would be an adorable. Look, this is, I give me for anyone who's watching and listening to this, please drop some fan fiction sites. I need to see a Connie cross. You know, uh, Ryoga, Akane Ryoga, let's just see it happen because that needs to happen. I would love to see that. Um, another character that I really enjoy is um, Ukio. I like Ukio because she doesn't have an agenda either, if I'm correct. She's just really good at fighting, she's a great cook, and she has a vendetta with Ranma. But the thing is that that dynamic is interesting because Rama never knew she was a female. And, but then they were, but, but putting it in perspective, they were young. They were young. So, you know, she was also kind of tomboyish. So was, I can get it. He, he wouldn't know. And then she has an issue with Rama when she comes back. And I think in season two or season three, and the only reason that she's got an issue with him is because she's under the impression that he was in on the father, Genma, ditching her. Which is funny because Genma, okay, going back into this, we, we're explaining all this to you guys. You probably didn't know this. But, so basically, Genma is Ranma's dad. He's, a, he's a, very much a loser, in my opinion. <laughs> Um, for someone who is such a trained martial artist, he never fights really. And, uh, he's always, I, I think they, he literally puts the anything goes 
<laughs> of their style. He literally lives that. Anything goes. So he sells off Rodma constantly. He, and, and look, when I say sells them off, he's not selling them off and other people are getting that booty cheeks. That's not happening. He's selling them off like, yeah, you know, if you give me this, your son's engaged, and my son will be engaged to your daughter. You know, or I promise you this isn't this. So he does it with Rama a lot. So Rodma, he he basically the uh Ukio's dad was uh he had one of those food carts. He sold them off to to him saying, Hey, you know, you know, I'm this martial arts leader of, of the of the Sautomi style of anything goes martial arts. And, you know, my son our our martial arts is gonna be huge. And, you know, we're going to be famous, make all this money, blah, 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 blah. And if you give me a cart with all your food, then your son can, you know, my son can, will marry your daughter and then I'll take care of you, blah, blah, blah. He's very conniving like that. So <clears throat> that happened. He got the dude gave the daughter, which is fucked up. He gave his daughter <laughs> to Genma. And then Genma ended up ditching the daughter and just taking Ranma and they went. And, you know, from there. And so Ranma never knew. So then when they introduce Ukio, she's the third, no, fourth girl that's in love with Rama, the fourth. <clears throat> so then they introduce her. She's got a beef. Then her and Rama fight. And then she finds out Rama never knew and didn't know she was a girl. And then come to find out the dad, you know, that situation with the dad. And so you see her as she develops. She's just literally, she feels like the outsider to the world of Ranma. She really does because she kind of gets dragged into stuff by proxy of Ranma, by proxy of Akane, by proxy of Shampoo or Tadawaki or Kodachi. Um, but when she's in there, she's the most level headed. Everybody, she's uh, fair. Like the whole thing with Ryoga and Akane, he was lit. She was literally trying to help Ryoga date Akane to basically help not only Ryoga but Ranma, because Ranma and Akane don't like each other. But yeah. So to get Akane out of Ranma's hair and to also get Ryoga out, she set up a date. And guess who crashed it? Ranma. So, all right. Aside, those are my top three characters. So aside from that, and no, Ranma is not one of my favorite characters because he's a dumbass. Anyway, <laughs> so my problem with Ranma one half, and I know we're all over the place, but my problem with Ranma one half, the show, one, Ranma's OP for no damn reason. And it's tiring to see him always win. Two, it's the fact that Ranma and Akane, who claim to dislike each other, Ranma calls her uncute, ugly, dumb, such and such. She calls Ranma jerk, all these other things. Yet when it Pervert, yeah, pervert. And yet every time they have the opportunity to move the fuck on, one of them two dumbasses always goes and cock blocks or vagina blocks or you know, pussy blocks the other. I'm like, why? Why? Akane, you don't like him. Why are you getting jealous? I don't understand this. Why? Okay, shampoo's going to take him off your hands. Why do you care? Ukiya's going to take him off your hands. Why do you care? Kodachi is... Oh, I would care. That's that's concerning. But <laughs> why, why do you care? Okay, in the case of Ranma, Ryoga wants her. Didn't that benefit to you? Same thing. So Ranma also does this with shampoo when it comes to moose. You know that? No, I didn't know that because I didn't see um, the it's, very beginning it's, of their interaction. It's subtle. It's subtle. But he does. 
And I'm like, but but at the same time, uh, shampoo has no interest in moose whatsoever. But it, it's I don't understand. Like it it becomes, and I don't know. Maybe I need to read the manga to to understand it better, or see if it's different. But in watching the anime, that gets old. It gets really old. It gets to the point where you're like, oh. Okay, third thing I dislike, which also will go into the fourth thing, but the third thing I dislike is the fact that the show is incredibly repetitive. It is incredibly repetitive. So, okay, I go this going into the fourth and the fifth thing. Okay, so third thing, yeah, it's repetitive. It's very repetitive in the sense that it has an intrigue, like a mystery beginning, an intrigue middle part. And at the end of the episode, some dumb happens and things go back to business as usual. As if basically the whole episode was pointless. I'm like, really? I'm 60 some episodes in and y'all doing the same thing over and over and over. What are we working towards? Which leads into the fourth thing. What are we working towards? Yeah, I'm gonna get to five soon. I'm gonna do that with my pinky, my, my thumb soon. But anyway, we're here. So, uh, yeah, you should be familiar with that. Anyway, <laughs> we're here. Yeah, I'm joking. She rose her, she raised her eyebrows. She was joking. Anyway, fourth thing. So we're here with the same repetitive thing. And the biggest problem I've seen with Rama is it's never building towards anything. It's never building towards anything. None of the episodes feel like they're connected, except for the Ryoga ones. They all seem like they're connected, but it there's no overarching plot. Like, are we trying to go and find a cure for the transformations? You know, do we are we going back to China to the Ginsikyo? Uh, uh, ponds or, or rivers or whatever every time they in a way go back to China they never ever dive into that I'm like and what makes it worse what makes it worse is the fact that they joke about it at the end of the goddamn episode I love the show, but I swear to God, I have never watched an anime where I felt like I'm wasting my goddamn time. There's no payoff. Like, you gonna make me laugh and then insult my intelligence? Really? Really, Ramiko? Okay, okay. Call you know, color color me stupid. Okay, fine. All right. It's just that, that's that's frustrating to me. Okay, fifth thing, fifth thing, and I'll shut up. So fifth thing, because I've been talking for about 15 to almost 20 minutes. So fifth thing that annoys the hell out of me. There is one particular episode, one particular episode, one episode where because of Akane being the bitch that she is, ends up hitting Ranma, knocking him into the pond at their house. And he hits his head and completely wipes his memory of, or not really wipes his memory, but his female side takes precedence. Like he has no desire to be a boy. He really believes he's a woman. And technically he could have went on from there and just been a woman. He could and- have. Yeah, you know, and it's like throughout that entire episode, Akane is the biggest bitch to him. And he's not even doing anything. That's the thing that gets me. It's like he's literally being sweet and kind. And she's still just being an ass to him. I want to add something to that. Go ahead. Okay, so I always thought that she was mean to Ranma because she was a man hater. Because she had a thing against guys, right? 
Except like, for yoga. So she has like a backstory where she grew up as a tomboy. She was teased mm-hmm. for that. And then she got, she made herself more feminine for a guy. And she was more feminine. And then all these guys were attracted to her, but she's like, no, I can Like she was, she really disliked men. Yeah, except she's for a few. Feminist. She's a modern day, modern day feminist. So she don't have the shaved head and curled hair. Anyway, go ahead. So when I saw that she was mean to male Rama, but nice to female Rama, I just thought she just hated men. That's it. But when she was upset with Rama as a female, like, she would get really defensive or insulted or something like that. For example... When Rama would use his feminine charms to get free stuff, like a little extra food here and there from the food stall, she gets mad about that. (laughs) She's like, Rama, how dare you do that? It's like, why? You can do it too. (laughs) But it just, it got to a point where everything that Rama does, she she just found a problem with it. Like, what if, like, Rama could do no good. <laughs> Even as a girl. And it just became more prominent in that very episode you were talking about. Because Rama really thought she, he, he, they were a girl. Rama really thought they were a girl. And acted like a girl was very sweet, just like you said. But Akani was still mad. Mm-hmm. And this is where I had a theory that the author made Akane like this on purpose to somehow develop their relationship. You know how it goes where like boy meets girl, something happens, they dislike each other. Kind of like um the Swan Princess. You remember the Swan Princess? Okay, so the Swan Princess, you know, the prince and princess, they meet each other, they're kids. But because it's like boys versus girls, it's like, ew, boys, ew, girls. And they just had like a conflict. Mm -hmm. And then they got older, puberty happened. They don't know how they feel. Like they're kind of attracted to each other, yet they kind of dislike each other because they know each other's flaws. And so there's still that conflict. But then when they get older, they mature more. They're like, hey, this person's not so bad. They, They outgrew that jerkiness. Mm -hmm. And then they find each other attractive. I thought this is how the author was making Akane going through that whole thing. But it doesn't seem like it's developing anything. It's not developing to that mature part. I'm not seeing that. And I'm theorizing that I'm not seeing that because... Which piece of plastic do you want? Uh (laughs) Because I'll, I'll give you the money to buy a bridge to get over it because it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I'm theorizing that the author's doing this to stretch out the story. What do you think? <sighs> <laughs> I wish I knew. Because I the only thing I can come to is the... the the realization that you have because sh- there's no redeeming or likable qualities to a Kane. She's loud. She has clearly anger issues, aggression issues. Like, I don't know. She dropped on her head. Did somebody give her a bad dick? Someone give her an STD or something. I'm just wondering I haven't seen, like, typically, look, and this applies to men, too, so I don't want anyone thinking I'm sexist, but anytime you find a female or even a guy, you know, those MGTOW guys are that you like this, too, but you find a female or a man that's that angry at the opposite sex, they got burned, typically. So... The way her, yeah, it started off, it it started off with she hated men. That plot thread got dropped quickly. 
Did it not? It did. <laughs> to, she not only dislikes men, she dislikes women. Like, if Ranma is even talking to another woman, she gets angry. If they jump on him or put him in compromising situations, she goes postal. There's nothing redeeming about Akane, especially the episode where she got powers. She got super powerful. And she damn near killed uh, uh, Ranma and Shampoo. Like, she's, I feel like as the show goes on, she becomes more psychotic. Which is not the usual. Normally, they mellow out, right? Because, yeah. you know, the development, the maturity. But she doesn't. She doesn't. You think that was the anime people? Because, like you said, 20, 20 episodes of the anime was part of the manga. Everything else was not. Yeah, it could be. But then some people say that she's like, I said, some say she's different in the manga. Others say she's the exact same. Like she just never, ever gets better. But I don't know. I haven't read the manga. Oh, I know you have, but it's been a while since you've read it. Well, that's why I'm saying that she's like a tsundere because she'll be having those bitchy sides to Ranma, but then she'll be sweet. But as I'm watching the anime and I'm thinking, okay, maybe I don't remember everything from the manga because it was quite a while back. But Akane has this weird thing. It's very... um. What's that thing called where you do this to me, where I can't do this to you, but you can do it to me? Oh, you mean... Um, oh. <laughs> Brain heart. Double standard. <laughs> Double standard. He just does a lot. A lot. <laughs> where <laughs> your face, you're like, mm-hmm. So, okay. So sometimes Rama is nice to her, and she's like, not trusting what he's saying. But then she's expecting him to be nice to her. And sometimes when he is nice to her, she takes it the wrong way. Like she's on defensive mode. And it's like, he can never do right with you. Like, for example, I think he was going to call her cute and she's expecting him to call her cute, but he did it and then she got mad. It's sort of like she got mad at him for not saying that she was cute, but she was also mad at herself for even expecting it. Ronma, all I gotta say is don't do it. I've been down that road. It does not get better. Bitches be crazy. <laughs> now, the other thing with Rama, like you said before, whenever Akane is getting closer to another guy, he gets upset. And I can't tell if it's because he really does have feelings for her or he just has that thing where you don't want anybody else to have what you have. Like, you don't want your toys to get taken away. Oh, it's like Nova. Yes. Yes. Because <laughs> there's some parts where I think it looks like Rama, he has feelings for her. Like, he's about to be more sincere towards her. But then all of a sudden, he gets immature. And he calls her uncute. Or a tomboy. Or You're all so stuff. uncute. <laughs> and that, I feel like, it feels forced. That feels forced in the story to stretch out the story so they don't get together. That part feels forced. But, like, there are times where Rama is just reacting to Akane. Like, when Akane lashes out to him, and then he says, oh, you're so uncute. Is it the right to say that? I think so. But then the times where she's getting closer to another guy, and he, like, cock blocks her, I'm like, why? You said you didn't like her. You said you want to dump her. Why? Why? It, it gets really annoying 
you know, it, it gets really annoying constantly seeing that over and over and over. It's like, it, it, you would think at some point it would stop, but it's, it's a recurring theme. And like the one girl that Rama does call cute is Ukiya. But I don't know. It, it, I, I don't know if there's a chance of him and her getting together because apparently, according to what I read in the manga, I'm not read in the manga, read about the manga, nothing gets resolved. At the like at the end of it, the manga, nothing gets resolved. He doesn't. Nobody gets rid of their curses. Him and Akane don't get married. So I'm like, what? is the point what is the point okay let me talk let me go on another tangent let me go on this tangent i'm gonna look strap in how is she the daughter of a martial artist she trains every day she break bricks every day but she is the most useless fighter well, that was loud. I hurt myself. She's like the most useless fighter. I don't understand that. Like, I really don't get I, I don't get it because she reminds me of another character, which is Kaoru from Ruin Kenshin, who's a swordsman who practices is the head of the Kamiya Kashin Ryu style, who who's just useless, constantly getting kidnapped, constantly. And that happens to Kane too, where she gets kidnapped at times and she's, you know, effectively helpless. But the only person she's effective at doing any harm to is always Ranma. She always physically hurts him. So, like, I think I said the other day, I'm like, that's a very abusive relationship. A really abusive relationship. And, and you know, I'll say about... Ron, uh, one thing I do want to say about Ranma, um, the character, is I know there's a lot of people that find him to be an asshole or a jerk. Um, there are levels to this, right? There's levels. And the reason that I feel that he is the way he is with her or in just in general is everything keeps happening to him. Like if you see how he interacts with people that aren't being aggressive or challenging him, he's normal, passive, nice, but everything you see with his interactions is in response. He, I mean, think of the stuff he had to deal with, with Genma, his dad, the stuff he has to deal with, with the Tendos, the stuff he has to deal with with uh, Akane, the stuff he has to deal with with Tadawaki, Kodachi, he's constantly in a state of reacting to everyone. And I think over time, when people are like, oh, he's just an asshole, I can understand that. When you're constantly having to deal with so much bullshit, you kind of become that way because you're reacting to everything. So I have sympathy for Ranma, but he's, he, he, he's still OP. <laughs> Too OP, too OP. It's like hurry up, get beaten, get humble. <laughs> so, so, what do you think of the uh, the voice changes from Sarah Strange to Richard Cox? It was weird. It was really weird. And the way I discovered it is, we just skipped ahead of episodes just to see what's going on because you and I were like, okay, where is this story going? And we saw the seasons, and we just landed on one season, one episode, and Rama's voice was different. And once it was pointed out that that was Inuyasha's voice, I couldn't unsee it. Every time Rana, Rama spoke, I saw gold eyes and white hair. I was waiting for him to say, Kakome! <laughs> Windscar! Iron Reaver Soul Stealer! I was waiting for that. <laughs> it was so weird because it's uh so the Sarah Strange when she did a voice she she sounded like a boy like hey how you doing 
mm-hmm. good looking, so cute. And then all of a sudden we had like this rough kind of high pitch voice. <laughs> it was really weird. I was like, it's so it's too different. It's too drastic. And I believe we looked up all the other voice actors, and there was this one point where it was changed, and we couldn't tell the difference. Yeah, the female Ron was changed three times. Never could tell. Because they stay within that same range. And I think Nabiki got changed. Uh, Genma got changed, too, I believe. But, you know, yeah, Genma, Genma was changed. And I could slightly hear it, but I think that person, as they got comfortable, they went to sounding like the original Genma. Um, mm-hmm. but, but I don't know. Like Richard Cox, now I like him, right? As Inuyasha. That's all I know him as. I know he's done other stuff, but that's all I know him as. Um,. His take on on Ranma, it's like it's the same character. I'm like, could you at least whoever was a casting director? I blame them because ap- apparently that and we can, we can dive into that if you want. Apparently that the change in voice for Ranma splits the fan base. You read that far ahead about it? Yeah, like on a lot of um, you know Reddit threads and, and old boards. A lot of people are split on that they because like you it? because there's the, you got a large majority. They got used to Sarah Strange as Ranma, mm-hmm. saying that her cadence, delivery, everything was perfect, and then. When he went, when you, you got Richard Cox in the role, there was no transition period. And it's just like from one episode to that one, boom, that's a change. And it's almost like Richard Cox just came in and did what he wanted to do. Because everything that when you listen to him talk, it just sounds over dramatic. Especially, like, put it this way when you listen to. Sarah Strange as Rodma. The cadence and delivery is perfect. Like, if you want Rodma to sound disinterested, she does it very well. She's very good. Like, yo, what's up? What? Why are you bothering me? You're so uncute. Like, she can, her range is really good. But everything Richard Cox says it just sounds in that same high pitched nasally. It, like I, I can't. His emotiveness is not there, which I think works fine as Inuyasha because in the Inuyasha, Inuyasha is an asshole. But I feel like he makes Ranma sound like an asshole, just twenty four seven. And I think if anyone came in listening to him as Ranma, I can understand people thinking that. Because Sarah Strange's Ranma did not come off that way. Well, Sarah Strange did really well in portraying a teenage boy. She sounded yeah. boyish. And as you said before, Ranma was just put in all these situations. He was reacting to pretty much everything, everyone. And the way he reacted to each character and each character was very unique was had all these kind of quirks. There was all sorts of storylines. Mm-hmm. And then you have the new voice actor, Richard. He sounds like he's ready to fight every time. Yeah. He sounds rough. He sounds wild. That's why I always picture Inuyasha. I don't, I don't hear a teenage boy from him. No. And the other thing with that is, like, you think of Inuyasha, when you hear, like, there's never a moment, and maybe I'm, you're more, you're more deeper into Inuyasha, the manga, and the, the anime than I am. With Inuyasha, 
there's rarely, if ever, him being not a dick. True, true. So he took that to Ranma. So if, basically, if you remove the yellow eyes, the red gi, and the white hair and the ears, you have Ranma. Or his take on Ranma. Which is interesting because when they did the movie, Sarah Strange came back to do the movies in the OVAs. And That's even for the and even with the promotion of the recently dubbed movies as of a couple of years ago, she came back and did it. Like we we saw the trailer on YouTube, and I'm like, that is Ranma. <laughs> I think you said that you wanted to see if if there's an explanation for the change in voice, like if something happened to Ranma. Or if he was going through puberty and his voice just changed. <laughs> yeah, so th so there is a, a lot of people. Uh, so for, for those who don't know, Sarah Strange left at the end of season three going into season four. Um, and the reason she left, which is the episode, the, the last one she did was episode 64 or 62. And then 63 and onwards was Richard Cox. So the reason she left is she wanted to do other things like she wanted to pursue other endeavors. So when she left, Richard Cox took over and he immediately came in and started recording. So a lot of people, because it's such it is jarring going from her to him. They don't even come off like the same character at all. So for a lot of people what I've read is their theory of why the change in the voice is so strong is because Ranma got older or went through puberty. The flaw in that logic is Ranma is already 16 years old. So if his nutsack dropped later, okay, fine. Happens a lot of us. It happens sooner rather than later. I mean, my dropped when I was 16 and I started sounding like Barry White. Before that, I was sounding like Trini from Power Rangers. But, you know, stranger things that happen. It can happen overnight. I mean, think of Justin Bieber when he was that kid that was handsome and whatnot to the druggie that he is now. Huge change. Or even better yet, Miley Cyrus. Ah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. So... A lot of fans just assume he got older, which I I could get behind if it wasn't for the fact of how his delivery of the lines. They're just, they don't, I don't like it. It's not the same. So, so if there was a modern voice actor, if they brought it back and they didn't bring back Sarah Strange, who would you want to have voice, Ranma? Oh, it's a hard one. Because I really like the boyish sound of Ranma. And I don't know how he is when he's older. Like, do they even go outside? Do they graduate from high school? Like, mm -mm. I didn't I didn't get to the end. So, okay. So, they're still teenagers. <laughs> and all the voice actors I've heard, I've heard in modern time, they sound like edgy boys. Or, oh, shoot. Like, for example, like My Hero Academia, Deku, he kind of has like a soft voice, kind of higher pitch, but kind of it can be low too at the same time. That's perfect for that type of character because he kind of starts as like, oh, scrawny, and then he starts to like get bigger, stronger. You mm -hmm. see that it, it, it works. But Rama, as you said before, he's OP already. He's OP, but he's a teenager. And then you got like Attack on Titan. You have Eren. Eren just sounds like he's angsty all the time. The biggest stick up the ass ever. Anyway. <laughs> um, 
And a lot of animes nowadays, they're very... They make the male characters sound... Oh, how should I say it? Like they're strong already? There's no gradual progression. No, there's... And I don't... I don't watch a lot of dubs. I watch a lot of sub. So I hear Japanese voices. Sub versus dub. (laughs) I hear a lot of Japanese voices. And so I can't really think of any English voice actor for Ranma that fits what I like for Ranma. Okay, I got one for you. You do? Yeah. Cody Christian. Why? You know who that is? Yeah, but why? Who is he? <laughs> no, you guys tell me why. Why him? Because I think that his delivery as Cloud would be perfect for Rama. Because he can do that uninterested, low, mellow. And then he can raise it and expand it as needed. I think he would fit with the disinterested nature of Ranma. Okay, I'll throw another one at you. Kaiji Tang. The voice of uh, Ichiban. From Yakuza Like a Dragon. Oh, okay. Okay, I can hear that. Because there's that like upbeatness. Yeah, the cloud one, that's a little hard. But the upbeatness of Ichiban... That that's easier to get. Okay, okay, I can see that. I could see that. Okay, Rick Gomez. He did the voice of Zach, the real Zach, not that phony from remake, but the real Zach from Crisis Core. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Okay, you're picking for games. <laughs> I was like thinking of of anime. <laughs> you thought outside of the box. Well, they do anime as well, but their most notable ro- roles, I'm just thinking of that. Um, trying to think, who else could I think of that could pull off youthful, aloof, disinterested, annoyed? And mind you, all of these guys that you mentioned do sound manly but i could see it matching a teenage boy still griffin burns oh yeah devil man cry baby tatigula and well i don't think you've heard him in genshin impact he could do it because he's i mean for someone he's the same age as me but he's got a very youthful voice I can see him doing it. I always, I was always thinking like Sour Strange or no one. Well, I'm, I'm fully with that. But if they did, you know how they have a tendency to recast. Yes, yes. I think the only time I've seen where they didn't do a re- full on recasting was um, the Trigon movie, and I think they were terrified. Of recasting Vash. They recasted everybody else. Everyone else is recast. But Vash. Because I think when you think of Vash the Stampede, you hear Johnny. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That makes oh. sense. Well, I got another one I could think of, but if I said that, people would get angry. Edward Elric, that's all I'll say. I was thinking that. I was thinking of him. I was like, oh, I don't know. Because, oh. I mean, think of how old he is in real life with the voice that he does. And he's got range. Yeah, but I was thinking about, like, the the boyish, deep boy, boyish sound. And I was thinking of, of him. But I was like, oh. Maybe, maybe not. I was still unsure about it. But all the other ones you named, I was like, 
Yes, yes, I can, I can picture that. Yes. So we talked about the characters. What do you think about like the little stories of Ronma? Which ones? <laughs> well, every time when they introduce a character, they make a story of how they're introduced. Why are they there? I think it's very clever how these characters are introduced. Like Shampoo, she's from an Amazon tribe in China. The reason why she's connected to Ranma is because in... It's a stupid reason, but go ahead. <laughs> Maybe not creative, but... <laughs> so, the Amazons have a custom. If they're beaten by a female, they are obligated to kill that female. But if they're beaten by a male, they are meant to marry that person. Pretty extreme for both th- or for both things. And Rama did both. He defeated Shampoo as a woman and a man. Shampoo overcame that. She's like, I love you as a man. I want to be with you. She I stuck with me him. to the max. <laughs> No well, marry up, no marry down. Well, it makes sense for the Amazon tribe because they're strong women. They need that strong seed. You like that one, didn't you? <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, she has her quips too, and when she does, I never see them coming. <laughs> And then we got Ryoga. He's stuck with Rama because he just views him as a rival and he blames Rama for himself turning into a pig whenever he gets hit with cold water. That, that, that's not even really it. The whole rivalry with Ryoga and Rama is they were kids. They were kids. They were like seven or eight years old, maybe six. And so Ryoga got lost and didn't show up for their duel. And so he blames Rama for running out, skipping out on her fight. And you're wondering for episodes, like, what the hell is this issue with Rama? Then you find that out and it's like, well, Rama didn't do anything wrong. You just didn't show up on time. So it's that displacement. So I'm like, it's so stupid. But if it was <laughs> any other character, like if it was a Kane, I would hate it. But because it's Ryoga, I'm like, okay, I, I'm cool with it. Also, the whole way that Ryoga gets thrown into the water is different between the anime and the manga. Oh? Yeah. Uh, in the anime, Ranma jumps on his head, I believe. And he uses his head as a footstool to jump off when they're in China. And then Ryoga falls and catches the cliff and then it breaks. Whereas I believe in the manga, the same thing happens, except he just gets stepped on and not. And when Ranma kicks off, he just falls into the water. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then you got Ukio who's connected to Ranma because of Genma because the daughter was sold to be betrothed to Rama. And then it was all for the Okonomiyaki stall. <laughs> it was all for that. <laughs> and then we have another one where Genma also sold Rama for food. And then Worst the family comes ever. over. And the family comes over and is like, I'm here for you, Ranma, my son-in-law. And then you see this girl. But then the a couple of those, they just came and went. They came and went, came and went. And then you got Moose, who is in love with Shampoo. But he, for some reason, he doesn't give up. He's not following the whole Amazon rules because the thing well, is. Well, it makes sense. Hey, the reason... That shampoo doesn't love him makes sense. He's not strong. Right. So he's not following the rules. He lost to her. He doesn't deserve her. 
but he still thinks he has a chance and he's blaming Rama. He's displacing that blame. <laughs> yeah. He's like, it's your fault I'm not with her. No, sucker. You're just not strong enough. Shampoo don't like you. <laughs> and they just bring in all of these quirky characters and somehow the author makes it blend in. There's we, always a story. Let's talk about the racism in the show. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, there's so much in this show that like could not work today. He's like, Is it yo. I said. <laughs> Wait, I have to catch myself. Okay, Is it because I said shampoo don't like you? <laughs> no. Remember, there's a one where they're like, oh, two two thousand yet ago. <laughs> they talk like that, and the thing is, people would say like. I could see some people trying to say like it's whitewashing, but when you really dig into the history of Japan and China, they don't like each other in real life. Like the countries, well, maybe it's mellowed out somewhat now, but like mm -hmm. back then and for centuries, there was serious animosity between them. I mean, hell, we even had a game about that. Ghost of Tsushima. What happened? That's a historical thing that happened when the Chinese or the Mongols, you know, Mongolians, they literally invaded Japan. There's actually a history of that happening several times with China and Veda invading Japan. So there is there. Well, I'm not sure if it is now, but there was some beef between Japanese and Chinese. So when you watched a red Japanese manga or watched a Japanese anime back in the day. Chinese were always portrayed a certain way by Japanese or uh, mangaka. And in like way, in manhwas, I believe they're called in China, right? Um, Japanese are portrayed a certain way. They are. They're always um, portrayed as the bad guys. <laughs> right? So, and, and like if you, if there's like a modern progressive person they wouldn't understand it, that the dynamic now but historically because I've, I've read a lot of things where people are talking about how racist it is how sexist how this how that and it's like it's a, it's a period piece take it for what it is you can't look at that through today's eyes and judge it it's still funny as fuck to me but there's some that just there. I forgot what was uh, we watched. Uh, yo, the funniest thing wasn't even official. We were watching that uh, satire, <laughs> that a uh, bridge uh, version. Yes, yes. I, mean, I was dead. <laughs> My only weakness is gravity. <laughs> <laughs> and that's um. That was uh, oh. portraying <laughs> Takiwaki Kuno because he always had like a reason why he's not winning. <laughs> it's not because he's weak. <laughs> you know, you got to give it up to the people that did the voice of Tatawaki in, in uh, Kodachi. Oh my God. For their first like voice acting roles, they did it really well. Really good. Because Kuno. Tatewaki Kuno, he's quite a character. He's annoying, yet he's got this quirkiness where he's kind of trapped in a certain time period. <laughs> and he's, I believe he's portrayed as like this rich guy. Like he's like the top dog. Upperclassman. Upperclassman yeah. Kuno. And he's always acting chivalrous. I say acting because he's. He has quite a dirty mind. Yeah, him him and his sister Kodachi are the two most fucked up characters in that entire show. And people say Shampoo is terrible. No. <laughs> well, you see, there's an episode. I'm not going to spoil it for a lot of you people. But if you watch the episode where they talk about his ninja hand servant or, or, or man servant, how they're treated. That's. I was actually sad with that episode. 
because it's really messed up. It, it really because my perspective of Kuno and Kodachi, which is funny when you think about their names, is supposed to be Kunai and Kodachi. Their weapons. When you think about like them prior to that episode you just think like they're just messed up but not evil that episode changed how i view those two there's nothing redeeming in my opinion about them maybe the dad yeah i'm on maybe the dad you know maybe it's because of him that the khakis kind of turned out the way the dead man yeah <laughs> the, okay that's that's another racist thing going on in this anime when they introduced him and um, I, I okay so I heard him but I couldn't really hear what he was saying but when he was saying some Hawaiian words I'm like wait is he supposed to be someone from Hawaii and I'm hearing him more and I'm hearing his accent and I'm thinking is that a like a Jamaican accent or Caribbean accent like is that what they think we sound like in Hawaii <laughs> why <laughs> why <What? laughs> it makes sense in context it makes sense because to a Japanese person who has probably a limited grasp on the English language Jama- Jamaican and pigeon they kind of sound alike <laughs> I mean, look at it. We out here in Hawaii, we already jacked Jamaican music. We call it Jawaiian and say, "Oh, this is island music. This is our music." No, it's not, y'all. <laughs> we took it from someone else. So, in that in that regard, I can I can be sympathetic towards. That's why he sounds like that. But I mean, he not only in this show, the before and after. I mean, he dark skinned too. <laughs> he got tan. <laughs> Because I, I, I'll be honest. I first, when I, I thought he's black at first. <laughs> you know, because he was also broad boned too. Like he had like a really big jaw compared to all the other characters. Because everybody else has like a more slim face. face. The only one that had like a broad face was Genma. And I kind of thought that was like Genma's relative. I was like, oh, who, who's that? Because he seemed fucked up too. Because Gen, Genma's messed up. As a father, and this guy He's seemed like messed a messed up. up, a messed up father. So I thought they were related, but it turns out they're not. So, <laughs> but you thought he was black? <laughs> I did because of the Jamaican accent, and I was like, "Oh, he's Hawaiian." I was like, okay. And I was thinking, I was like, if because okay, for those who don't know. For us Hawaiians, yes, her and I are both Hawaiian. Um, we're not the type of Hawaiians that get offended, but there are some that'll get offended over anything. Remember when Moana Moana came out? Yeah, that was that was that was people were split on that. I thought it was a good thing because, yeah, they're sharing the culture. They're letting people know how, what this culture is like. So they don't think that every Polynesian is like this. They were split on, um, what was the other one? They and the other one was, the other one was like they were taking in the culture and exploiting it. And then some people were getting mad that it wasn't accurate. But the thing was, Moana was like blending all of them together. Mm-hmm. Basically, so they don't get caught in a um, uh, controversy. But by trying to avoid a controversy, they effectively caught themselves up in controversy. Well, I, I, I liked it because if you've been to the Polynesian Culture Center and you remember everything they like, teach you over there you can literally pick out everything in moana that they took from each uh um polynesian area i don't want to call Mm -hmm. it polynesian area because some of them don't want to be called polynesian (laughs) 
<laughs> they don't like to be generalized. Mm -hmm. But besides that, I thought it was... I was impressed by how detailed they were that I could recognize where each one was from. Yeah, so how much of uh, Kuno's dad could you recognize? Dad? <laughs> If you if you didn't have the lay and the ukulele and the you know the surf shorts and the slippers, he had the slippers, yeah. You saw them. I thought he was a guy from Okinawa. Like yeah. I didn't because uh, that was like a more because they're near a beach, right? It it can mm -hmm. get sunny. It, people like to go to the beaches there, so I thought that character was someone from there, but then. They had the accent, and then they used the Hawaiian words, and then they had a ponytail that apparently is supposed to be a coconut tree. I thought that was weird. I was like, <laughs> so, so there, there's there's more context to this too. So people, if, in case you don't know, Okinawa and Japan for a long time were two separate countries. It was uh, originally what Ryukyu Islands, so it's completely separate. Now it's one country. So here's the thing that's funny, and for the people that would get super offended, they wouldn't understand this. Most Japanese people that come here fall in love with Hawaii, and then they love the, to surf and get tan. And you basically, you hear their broken English mixed with pigeon. You've seen it. Yeah, yeah. So, so when I thought about it further, I was like, that's what he is. <laughs> He's a fob. And when we say fob, we mean fresh off the boat. He's a fob Japanese who just fell in love with Hawaii. But I don't know where he got the Jamaican accent. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get further in the anime to understand why he is the way he is right now? No, I stopped that episode. I was upset with the voice change for Ranma. Oh. <laughs> is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Because I remember you, you did want to talk about quite a number of things. But we did cover a lot of it. I feel like we covered all of it. Um, I think it's just the fact that the show, and maybe it's just because that's kind of how older anime was in comparison to modern stuff, is older anime literally was directionless for a long time, and then bits and pieces it would pick up, which made sense, because back then, anime was made, it would be made years after the manga, but if you can't think of it, a couple volumes would be like one or two episodes, if you put it in context like that. So manga, uh, anime would catch up to manga relatively quickly. And for the animation studios, they would typically make filler. Well, I think we're, we're all familiar with that. In the case of Ranma, because Ranma actually got canceled. That's another thing. It never finished. The show never finished. But the movies apparently, and the, the OVA and the movies wrapped up the show. Um, and apparently it was a live action movie, which I don't know if I want to see that. Uh, I think I'm good on that. But um, the problem with Ranma is it felt like, it feels like filler start to finish. Like the first episode sets the tone, thinking there's going to be a journey to get find a cure, but it's never plot points are dropped so quickly, which I which is interesting because I read something that uh, Rumiko Takahashi actually, um, midway through the manga, she dropped the overarching theme and just focused on individual stories, and she she got rid of it. So it's annoying. I, I think it's annoying for me coming from um, watching Inuyasha, which Inuyasha had a lot of filler. It had a lot of filler. That was 
it took a long time to get anywhere, but at least in Inuyasha, you felt like you were going somewhere. Whereas with Ranma, I don't ever feel like we're going anywhere. I don't feel like there's a payoff. And effectively, it's just you just take it at face value. So long, I think with Ranma, so long as you don't look for a deeper contextual reason, like meaning, you'll find some and just turn your brain off. When you see Akane come on stay on, on, on turn your brain off. Just she's predictable. She's gonna get mad at Ranma. She's gonna blame him for something. Call him an idiot, call him a pervert, call him a jerk. He's gonna call her uncute, so uncute, uh, uh tomboy, da da da. You're gonna see them do dumb things back and forth. So once you understand the routine and you can accept that, I think you can get with it. But for the most part, it it doesn't go anywhere. And I think if you can if you can accept that, you can enjoy it. You know what that just reminds me of? Mm. The the Simpsons. They never grow up. They never get older. And every episode is just its own story and it's just there for entertainment. Mm. I can see that. And the, yeah. se- the series just keeps going and going and going and going. That's what it reminds me of, what you just said. Now, I do understand where you're coming from, where, like, the in the beginning, there was a story. Ranma was bent on trying to turn back into a full man. Then, at one point... Yeah, because he was trying to go to China constantly, and then they, they dropped that plot point. Yes, they did. And he was very upset that he was turning into a girl. He was upset that he wasn't a full man. Like, it was sort of like he was getting defensive on it or he just felt like his masculinity was being questioned. Not only from us, but himself too, because he he turns into a girl and, you know, guys like her and he was probably starting to like being a girl. You saw that shit? Yeah. And then at one point he just accepted it. He's like, I'll work with it. I'm fine with it. Uncle, can I just have a extra snack there? Oh, the, n- the nudity, too. I was shocked at the amount of nudity. Like, it's not like hentai or anything like that. It's 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 very, you know, childish tongue in cheek. But I so and, and you know, uh, this is the last one I'll bring up is I never remember this being shown on TV when I was a kid. The only exposure I ever had to Ranma, like I said, was at EGM magazine back in 1993. I never saw it on TV. And then I found out that it was direct to, DV, uh, direct to the VHS, which I'm like, I had no way of getting. When I was growing up, I had no access to anime. My parents didn't understand it, especially my mother. You, you know my mom. <laughs> yeah, Based yeah, on yeah. whatever way the wind blows. That's how she is. But um, there's... You know, that was during a time when she was super religious. So I couldn't watch. And I used to love Sailor Moon. I used to get picked on by my siblings. And then there was the religious thing. Of, Why are you watching girls transform and fight demons? And, that, you know, I had to deal with that. So I would I had no easy access to anime. I don't think a lot of us did. But you would occasionally see it come on TV. So, like, when I see that people are talking about they used to watch it as a kid. And I'm like, How? I never had access to it. Especially with the nudity they had. That. How censored was it? Well, back then it was pretty censored. You didn't see any nudity unless it was like on the sci fi channel. The yeah. sci fi channel sometimes aired anime. The like Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. And then uh, um, Adult uh, Swim came in. And some of the anime showed some nudity, but not too much. And that was huge back then. That was a <laughs> that was like we're gonna call and complain against the cable company for showing other than that. Yeah, and, and you know, Sailor Moon was censored. Yeah. I don't and- care what nobody says. Serena all day. Not Usagi. And then 
in Ranma, they had some they had some unity and then they had some uh I don't want to say they hinted at homosexuality. <laughs> um well, if you think about uh uh Grandpa Hoppy thing, yeah. Yeah, so there's like a, a lot of things that um were ethically questioned. But I wouldn't be surprised that it didn't air in the US because there's just too how much do you stuff to censor. How do you too censor? much. And the other thing I'm kind of looking at too is like it makes me wonder about Japanese culture. Like I know there's a lot of perversion in Japanese. I mean, I've watched Japanese porn. I'll be open about that. I can't get down and get off to no Japanese porn. I'm sorry. Chicks look. <laughs> it's just like, you know, you whip it out and you're looking at the porn. You're like, Man, I don't feel, I feel dirty. I'll put that down. That's <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just I'm just being honest. Like I don't know. I know some dudes that got off on I remember that one time um the dude I went to college with, James, he let me have his laptop for a bit. And man, there was so much Japanese porn on that, and I'm like, I feel dirty. I can't even <laughs> touch these keys. Are these keys clean? Anyway. Um just like looking at the um the way that the old men in Japanese media is portrayed on a real realistic level, like on some, some real talk, it does pose a question of concern because you see in, in anime and manga where the grandpas are willing to peep in on their granddaughters it makes you wonder because I, I know that rape cult, like revenge porn or rape culture is very prominent in Japan, especially in their porn. It just makes me wonder how much of that is real life. Cause you see it too much in anime and manga to not question it. And it would, I would be like, damn, how many girls have had to deal with that with their grandfathers? That's some incestuous level of shit. Just saying. But it's not Black Bible, but you know. <laughs> so are you referring to grandpas because Hapusai was viewed as a grandpa in the anime? Yeah, you look at him, look at Master Roshi. Uh, you know, the way they portray older men in anime and manga, they're always perverted to the point of being it's cause for concern in a way I would say it makes me speak to the uh, or curious about the, the culture like is this going on there I know we laugh about it look at the anime and laugh about it but you know as people get offended about all this other dumb shit but I'm looking at that like how much of that is real um uh. I don't know what to compare that to in Western culture. Kind of like, I want to say it's like that one uncle in the family that always gets drunk or something, gets rambunctious. But like, I don't, it's not very common in Western culture to have that. Like, is this not tolerated? Yeah, pervy, pervy old man. Because it's not tolerated. It's not. But with Master Roshi, he was single, yeah? And several hundred years old. Yeah, and Haposai, he was single too. He's not really a grandpa. He's like the master of Rama's and Akane's dads. Yeah. And they're both uh, masters of martial arts. That's, yeah. <laughs> Masters. Masters. Mm -hmm. But that is a good question of why it's so okay for these mangakas to have that character. 
Because all the other animes we watch, we don't really see pervy old men. Do we? I feel like the more it started to get into the Western market, that started changing. And it makes me wonder if that's a dubbing choice or, you know, the translator's choice. Because it, it, it begs a question of why is that so frequently found? Mm, I'm trying to think of like the more current titles nowadays and you don't you don't have like the pervy old men. You usually have like that adolescent boy that's like girl crazy. Where cool. any girl they see, it they're they're okay with it. They fall in love with them. Sounds or, like Sam's. Or fuck boys. I, I was thinking of Demon Slayer, that guy with yellow hair. Mm. And then I was thinking of Miroku. From Inuyasha. Uh, the Playboy, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because That's going to be different when Moroku's voice has changed. Mm, yeah, because uh, they have Yashihime now. But he, yeah. he, we saw we saw an episode of that, and I didn't... Unless that was before he passed away, I didn't hear a difference. Well, I think they recorded... All of it. Mm, 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 mm. Before he passed away? Yeah. Oh, okay. Should be fine then. Well, yeah. The the um, the only one I read, well, as far as the most recent thing I read where you got the pervy old man that actually do cross that line was that, uh, was it Emergence? Oh. I read that there that 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 one that one hit me. Um but in that one it's just like you saw the dad rape the daughter and then you had the pervy old guys, you had the boyfriends, like it really made me wonder, like because I mean, even in on train like there's cases of women being raped on trains mm-hmm. in Japan. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it seems like there's an aspect of it that's in that culture. Um, because it's very, it's very a, a, a expressively restricted culture, you know, and uh, you look at relationships between men and women are way more constrained, like, than they are here in the West. And in my interactions with Asian men with Asian girlfriends or Asian wives is the women are usually very dominant and domineering over the guy. The guy is usually submissive and just takes whatever, you know, until you, you know, you pipe down the way it needs to be laid down. That's all I got to say. Are you finding connections with Ranma and the Japanese culture? Hey, you know, I know it. I'm just saying. Anyway, that was my little tangent. What else you got? <laughs> what else? I <laughs> Mikhail went like he went on the serious route, delving into analyzing what Japan culture is like, what's going on there, what is the underlying thing that mangakas really want to talk about, but they don't really talk about it, but they like show peaks hints of things I feel like that's what Mikhail Casanova was doing I went full circle <laughs> yeah, I, I did and didn't even realize I did it myself but you know that's what happens but since you brought that up I'm wondering if any of the characters in Ranma was like that too. It was like a reflection of what's going on in Japan. Like with shampoo, is that was that a reflection of how the relationship between China and Japan is? Possibly. I mean, one of the best examples of a anime reflecting, or you know, a manga reflecting the 
issues of society in Japan was Caligula. That was a perfect example. Like when you have such a repressive culture, which is weird because as much as people hate Western culture or the quick to call it race, uh, misogynist, racist, this, this, and this, I wonder how these same people would feel if they were in Japan. Because Japan gets a lot of passes. Gets a lot of passes. It's really funny when I hear how people down the West, but they praise Japan, and I'm like, you wouldn't like Japan. First off, Japanese don't really like outsiders. You can't even rent certain places if you're not Japanese to live. You can't get certain jobs if you're not Japanese. Like That's one of the most racist countries. And yeah, we give them passes for everything. It's funny. I think it's funny. That's that's wait 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 wait. I thought there were some animes and games where people in America were outraged on, and they wanted to cancel it. No, oh, that's all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, there's always this pass of oh yeah, that's Japan. Yeah, there is. There is. And I'm okay with that because that's their thing. That's their country. They do what they do. I I don't think we have a right to interfere how they handle things. That's like us imposing on them. I don't know how it's working out for them. All I know is that they have a declined birth rate. As, that's concerning. Yeah, that's really. I mean, they're probably going to go the way of us Hawaiians pretty soon in the next hundred years. I don't know. They have a pretty large population and they're pretty. And economically growing. But I think that's the result of the low birth rate because they a lot of them are concerned with the with work with having a comfortable luxurious lifestyle that they neglect the social aspect they're like work more meet less people i mean we can also talk about the the work mentality think of okay so for those who don't know in japan well here in hawaii not japan we have a very high asian population Almost every rental co- property is owned by someone who's Japanese, Chinese, or Korean. And almost every job is run by someone who's Japanese, Korean, or Chinese. So the Asian mindset for work, where you go to work regardless, even if you're sick, is very prevalent here. I would say. So, which conflicts with the norm for American working standards, the labor laws, because there's a lot of places here that don't adhere to it. I used to work in a hospital where you're told that if you're sick, don't come to work. If you have a cough or a sneeze, you don't come in. But at the same time, if you take time off, it's frowned upon. If you take time off because you're sick, it's frowned upon. It's interesting how the Asian mindset of work really is detrimental to the health and well-being of a person overall. Not financially, but in every other aspect, you're fucked. Anyway, this is another tangent. We, this could be another episode we could talk about. Wait, wait, I want to add something. <laughs> is this your longest podcast? Yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. <laughs> this is the this is the first podcast where we talk about stuff outside of manga and anime. <laughs> okay. I read an article where they were trying to improve the birth rate in Japan by installing stripper poles in newly built apartments, trying to 
encouraged the bound to go well, well. And uh, they also implemented a plan of installing the a bathtub uh, outside, not in the bathroom, but outside to get people in the mood. <laughs> uh, encouraging people to see each other naked and lead to procreation. <laughs> well, first off, my fat ass is not about to get on no pole. So if I was there, <laughs> that would not be happening. Secondly, um, girls need to put some meat on their body. But then again, a Asian dudes like these skinny, skinny, featureless girls. So that's that's the thing. I, it's just kind of funny because when I was working, every place I've worked at where I've worked with guys who are Japanese or some type of Asian, it's always been a situation where they, a woman I find attractive, the luxury list, like I like tits, I like ass, I like hips, I like a tall Amazonian woman. I like a freak. Like, he was not a freak, but I like a freak. Just putting it like that. Um, women that to the rest of the world would be considered attractive, like case in point, like a Selma Hayek or Halle Berry or, you know, Jennifer Lopez, for example, to them is unattractive because they like these plain featureless Asian women. And look, I've fucked Asian women before. Made my damn pelvis hurt because you just hidden bone. Especially when the, the pussy is at the bottom and, and it's not perpendicular. Anyway, I'm just saying. I'm <laughs> 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 just saying. Uh, but, 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 you know, I'm just saying. But then you got them, them, them ones like Hitomi Tanaka. Hey, girl, how you doing? I know I'm married to you, Lehua, but hey, Hitomi, how you doing? That'd be the one time I'd step out. That'd be the one time because she she hot anyway. But you got ones like her that are rare that are just naturally vol voluptuous. But even in their own culture, a lot of women that are voluptuous are looked down upon and often get regulated to sex work because they're shamed for having figures, hips, breasts, ass. But you have a media of games and anime, manga, and hentai that promotes and thrives in it, but the culture looks down upon those who have it. It's so hypocritical. I was just thinking about that because in Rama, all the women have hourglass figures. And in real life, them bitches fly as a board. I'm just saying. I, I'm just saying. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was just thinking all this time Mika was talking about this stuff and I'm thinking, yeah, female Rama had boobs. She had hips. Yeah. <laughs> And societally speaking, it's looked down upon. That's interesting. Popular so, stories have opposites of what society views acceptable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the, the Asian dudes I know I hear, if a woman has those features like breast ass, thighs, hips, and she weighs more than 90 pounds or a buck 10, she's fat. Well then. I'm like, that's fat? Your dick must be small. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. That's more for me. No wonder your population <laughs> falling off the planet. <laughs> Let me be Genghis Khan. I'll go populate it. Hey, I know agriculture. I will sow my seed across that, <laughs> that vast fertile land. Anyway. Is there any 
anything else you want to talk about? You're on my half. We're on my half. No, I got nothing else. I said what I had to say. <laughs> so every uh, episode of Podcast Across Worlds, we have a question for viewers. Is there a question you want to ask for the viewers, the listeners? <laughs> Oh, question. I want to ask them? Yeah, yeah. If not, I have a question. Oh, I got a question. What? You sure? Can I say Can I really say it? Yeah, you can say it. Is there a censor? Not censored. Okay, so, okay, here's here's my question. How come you motherfuckers ain't leaving ratings on a podcast, on that whole podcast? Come on now. That's my question to you. Y'all like this, so go start leaving a rating. Leave some comments in, in the video down below. How come y'all ain't do it? Do your job. She doing her job. She making this episode. She recording it. She edited it. She uploaded it. She do all that stuff. How come y'all ain't doing it? If you listen to it, it don't take nothing than to take your Cheetos feel fingers and go type on that, that smartphone thing in Majiggy. Go do it. Do your job. That's my question. Why are you, why are you not doing your job? Anyway. <laughs> And I believe this concludes uh, the episode of podcast. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Where's your question? <laughs> that was your question. We only do one question. What question okay, for well, episode? Who, who's taking me serious? That's your question. <laughs> <laughs> so the Paul question for this episode, it's related to what we were talking about. We have realized that there are some controversial aspects in Ron Mahath about sexuality, about tolerance of perversion, about racism. Is there any other titles that you've encountered that has the same thing or you've questioned on? If so, what were they? If the platform allows it, leave it in the comments below. If not, we do have a Discord. There's a link in the description. That link will lead you to the Paul question thread. It'll have the question if you forgot about it for some reason. And then you can answer it wherever you need to, either in anime or manga. I, I shut up so you can do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me end your show. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Now, now, for real, this concludes the episode of Podcast Across World talking about Ranma half my name is Lehua Superfina host of podcasts across the world I upload videos on my youtube channel youtube.com slash superfina and I also stream on twitch every Tuesdays Thursdays and Saturdays and you can find me on all social media platforms at Lehua Superfina Mikhail Casanova where can people find you Oh, you can find me everywhere. I'm all over the place. I'm in places I shouldn't even be. So just, you know, look for me. Mikhail <laughs> Casanova across the board. So uh, you can find me on, um, you know, you can find me on the hub, you know, porn hub. So Mikhail, you know, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Where that money at? I'm, you making I'm that kidding. money? I'm kidding. I'm not on the hub. Catch me on my OnlyFans, you know. No. I'm <laughs> okay, you can catch me. Uh, I'm I'm on everything. So Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I don't know why the hell I'm on Facebook anymore, but I'm on Facebook. Uh, on TikTok, I don't do none of them dumb dances. I'm not a thought with big titties. It's over there with no personality, but getting thousands upon thousands upon thousands of views. I'm not like, oh, you need to go get on that. You got a baby You're getting boobs now. Go go get on TikTok and OnlyFans. Anyway, go, go, show them. Do this. Do that. There you go. <laughs> no, raise them hands up higher. I'm kidding. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm on um, literally YouTube and on Twitch. I stream every single Monday, Wednesday. Fr well, I attempt to do every single Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Half the times when I need to stream, I don't even feel like it like today. But uh, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, I stream on twitch.tv slash Mikhail Casanova. Catch me with new episodes of, which is funny, we're both in Hawaii. We both have a podcast, but I got the number one podcast. She's going to overtake that pretty soon. 
But um, number one podcast in Hawaii, the Cast Over Podcast, where I interview people in the video game, tech, and Hollywood industries, music industries, and more. So if you're interested in how uh, the video game industry works, movies or music or, you know, some of your favorite celebrities, I probably already interviewed them. So you can catch that on the YouTube channel, on the Twitch channel, uh, it's the Casanova podcast. So the T E. Yeah, we're going to English class. T H E Casanova completely spelled wrong. K A S A N A V O. No, in what the fuck k-a-s-a-n-o-v-a there we go Com- completely correct incorrect but cast number with k uh the cast number podcast every single week brand new episodes every monday and uh that's all i got you know you can catch me on the hub you can catch me on only fans like i'm showing skin there you go look at that look at that look, show them see? your feet look get that foot action see 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 Look at that dirt. That's prime dirt. Don't make that wash face. Wash your feet. Wash your feet. How about you wash them for me? I can. How much you could pay me? Well, you already got pay me. What's that in your belly? <laughs> <laughs> See? Thank you all for watching podcasts across worlds. Keep watching and they keep reading manga and keep listening slash watching podcasts across worlds. We'll see you on the next one. Later. Yeah, I'm on. <laughs> yeah, go watch it for the keikis. Gotta do it for keikis, man. Yeah, go watch it. Go watch it on the tube. Go watch it on the who the the hub. Go watch it on Pornhub, yeah. For the cake, Isma. No, I'm kidding. Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. This bump.